Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the BMW Underbed Gooseneck Kit for a 2022 Ram 2500 with the OEM prep package. Now this is what it's going to look like when it's installed and when you're ready to hook up to your gooseneck you'll have your ball right here you can use the latch on the side to lock that in but the great part about this kit is the fact that when you're not using this you can actually stow this upside down and it's going to fit in there with no problems it's also going to make sure that you have full access of your bed even your safety chain loops sit pretty good in between the corrugations here to maximize the flatness of your bed so it's not going to be in the way when you need your truck to be a truck but as soon as you're ready to actually get that gooseneck towing, pretty easy, you're gonna pull this out, swap it over, lock it in place. Now this is gonna be a two and five sixteenths bowl, and you're gonna get a 30,000 pound uh, towing capacity. So overall, that's pretty heavy duty. Uh, I really don't worry too much about the gooseneck being the weak link. You do wanna make sure that what the truck is capable of towing before hooking up, but definitely with 30,000 pounds, that's really gonna open it up to what you can tow with this. A neat design that this ball has is the fact that it's got holes on all four sides so it doesn't actually have to be in any direction. You can drop it in, it's going to slide in nice and tight. And the great part too is when it's upside down, it fits really well in here but there's also these small little channels that's going to make sure that if there is any water pooling up it's able to actually drain down so that way you don't have water building up with corrosion or anything like that. It's also powder coated and this is also uh, coated as well. So you really don't have to worry about that rust and corrosion over time. So really heavy duty, solid product. And throughout the whole install process, they do a really good job of making sure that this fits perfectly. Now the great part about this underbed kit with the prep kit is it's really simple actually. You can see the powder coated gray center section and really that's all there is. It just bolts up and it's going to bolt in through factory holes and it's very simple overall compared to a lot of some of your other underbed gooseneck kits. And this one, it fits really well. The instructions are really well laid out and it's really easy to drill the hole to have it aligned. They have templates for it. And so throughout all, if this is your first underbed kit, this is going to be a relatively easy one. Now with that, during the install, there are a few spots. Uh, just kind of getting to some of this hardware. I will admit it is kind of tricky. So you might need some crow's foot. You might just kind of have to swap through a few different tools to get to them. And sometimes torquing them down is difficult. And that is kind of by nature the hardest part of some, some of these underbed kits. But this is one of the easier ones to do. Now speaking of that installation, I'm going to walk you through all the steps so you can get yours installed on your truck. Now to begin our installation, I recommend dropping the spare tire as well as the heat shield down. It's just going to really open everything up and you're going to have a little bit more room to work with. It's already kind of tight, especially trying to get to some of the hardware. So the instruction manual says it's optional. Highly recommend it. Uh, just having more space is going to make it easier. So we'll go ahead. We're going to lower down our spare tire and get this out of the way. And with the spare tire out of the way, we can go ahead. There's going to be some 10 millimeter bolts here that hold the heat shield in. You'll be able to see these pretty quickly. There's also going to be some up here that we'll need to remove as well. So during this whole process, highly recommend keeping all your hardware in a safe, organized spot. It's going to make reinstallation a lot easier. Now, something else that's gonna make our installation a little bit easier is popping off our exhaust isolator here. It's gonna allow us just to have a little bit of movement of this exhaust, uh, sometimes when getting it in place, just to have a little bit of wiggle room will make it a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off. And sometimes if it's covered up in dirt and debris, it's easy to just put a little bit of silicone uh, spray or even a penetrating oil, just kind of lube this up. And then I'm gonna take a pry bar here and we'll get this popped off. So this is supported further down, but again, this just gives us just a little bit more for it to drop down. And uh, later on, we may need to use a ratchet strap or something along like those lines to kind of get more clearance, but this is gonna help. So now you're gonna wanna grab your alignment plate. And this is kind of a testament to B&W's quality. Um, this is really, really nice because it makes it a lot easier to find our perfect spot to drill our pilot hole to get that hole mounted through the bed. Now you're gonna see this hole here we're gonna line it with this uh, hole that's on this center section here. So I'm on the front of the cross member here. So I'm gonna just slide this over and then make sure that these are aligned. And then from there, I'm gonna just push straight up. And again, just make sure that these are aligned properly. Now the instructions say you can use a C-clamp to kind of hold this in place. 
Um, but as long as you're putting this directly straight up, holding it against it, everything should be nice and square. Just make sure it's nice and tight. Now we're going to be using the center hole here. So I'm just going to take a paint marker, mark that hole, and that's going to allow us to get our pilot hole drilled there. Now with that pilot hole marked, we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and drill this out. And I'm just kind of using a small drill bit here because um, we'll be going up with our uh, a hole saw later to get this perfect. But really make sure that this is lined properly and then we'll just drill until we make it all the way through the bed. Now with that pilot hole made, it's going to be easy to make sure that we're properly aligned to when we put our center section up. And we're going to be using a three and a half inch hole saw. Uh, so using that pilot hole here, we're just going to drill through. So take your time. Now if you have a uh, spray and bed liner, sometimes this can, you're going to be working at it a little bit longer. But I highly suggest um, putting this up to a pretty high setting and using your feet to kind of keep this in place so it doesn't throw your wrists around here. So go ahead and start making our hole. Now there might be some burrs here just from cutting it out, so I'm going to just take a file, kind of run that around so all the edges are nice and clean. And once you have that smoothed out, I'm going to go ahead and just vacuum this up because we're going to be putting a little bit of paint here on the raw edge. That way it doesn't turn into rust over time, but we want to make sure it's nice and clean before putting paint down. Now as far as putting paint down on here, I'm going to be using just a white paint marker just to kind of get these edges to keep them clean. If you don't have a paint marker, no big deal. You can use spray paint. Uh, if you have white, which matches our truck, great. If your truck's a different color, using clear or black, um, whatever kind of looks best for you. Now if you are going to spray paint, something I recommend is in the kit they're going to have this. It's kind of nice to just lay it directly over here. That way you can kind of spray it. It's going to coat it up, but it's not going to have overspray everywhere. So just a little helpful tip. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of mark our edges with this, make it nice and clean. So now we got this all painted up, it looks really good. We'll be able to start working and putting the bottom part, actually installing it here. Uh, you can leave your paint, your file, and your vacuum. We're going to need that later on when we do uh, our safety chain loops here. So you can leave those, we'll head underneath the vehicle. Now at this point, we're going to check to make sure we don't have any electrical connections. A lot of times I have plastic push pins that hold them in. If you do have that, you're going to want to pop those out, and that way we have clearance. We'll reinstall them later. Ours does not have that. And since we are going to be sliding it up here, you're going to notice that we do have some lines and cables. Now there's a bracket up there and there's going to be hard lines. So I'm going to try my best to kind of get this up without having to drop this down. Just be very careful. You obviously don't want to damage any of these during installation. Now we're going to take our fastener blocks here and we want this flange facing down towards our cross member here. Now sometimes they can be pretty tight. There's a slot here in the corrugation of the bed. We're going to try to get that in place. Um, you may have to kind of move it around a little bit. So it is pretty tight here. Um, so our first one, we'll try to get this in place. What we're going to do is uh, just slide this flange portion in and up, and then we'll kind of slowly work its way down, and that's going to allow us to get our other one in place. Again, this is rather tight. You can do this from the front or the back, so whatever works best for you to kind of line these up, but you can slowly move your way over. And what we're going to do is try to get these to align with these holes here. Now, if your bed has seen some wear and it's dented up, this is going to get a little bit tricky. Um, what I've found in the past, this, this bed is perfectly new. We don't have to worry too much, but what I've found is putting a pry bar here and just kind of slowly lifting to give you a little bit more space. So if that bed is dented in, um, you'll have a little bit more room to work with. Now, what kind of helps is just kind of lifting up here. That's going to take just a smidge of tension off to allow us to kind of get this in place. Um, and then once you kind of are able to shift this around, you should be able to get these to line up. You can kind of push on this inside too. There's enough of a gap. But again, just kind of work this until we get these aligned. There we go. So we got this one in place. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the other side. Now at this point, you might want to grab an extra set of hands. This is fairly heavy, at least while holding it up there and trying to get it to fit, but also have some hardware ready. Now these do have a thread lock, but we're going to be just hand tightening these in, just to kind of keep it in place. 
And you're going to see these threaded portions here on each corner. I'm going to try to get those in place. And then once we have it up, we can also try to align our blocks that we put up there. Now to get this in place, best bet, we're going to be lifting over the exhaust side. And those lines that I mentioned earlier, just be very careful here. We're going to try to route it over those. So just kind of slide this up. And you can kind of let the exhaust slightly hold it. I'm going to take our bracket here, make sure that we're clearing that. And then just kind of go it in at an angle. And then we should be able to push this up. And this is where we can go ahead, get our hardware threaded in for now. And the good part is once we kind of get these two in place, it's at least going to hold this up for us. Now I'm also going to do the front, that way it's not resting on these lines. So now we're also going to take those same hardware here and we're just going to get these started. That way they're not moving around on us. Do the same on the other side as well. So now at this point, we're going to want to check to make sure that we're lined up properly and it's looking really good. But before we tighten things down, uh, using a lifting device to kind of really get it set exactly where we want it is going to be key. It's going to make it a lot easier and know that we're going to have it right where we want it to go. Now, as far as making a lifting device, uh, there's a few different ways you can do this. If you get some two by sixes, it's gonna work fine. I use jack stands and I just have a pry bar. You can use a jack handle, whatever. Um, and basically, just with the ratchet strap, you're gonna hook this through the lock here on the gooseneck. And then we're just gonna ratchet this down. It's gonna cinch this up and pull it exactly where we want it to be. It's also a good time. You can slightly put a little bit of different pressure on it if it's slightly off. You can kind of get some of that ironed out, but overall ours looks really, really good. It's kind of the glory of that alignment pin is it really does make sure that it's right where it needs to be. So we're going to go ahead, tighten this down, and we're going to see this kind of pull up and go exactly right where we need it. Now we can see that's nice and flush with this exactly where we want it. So we can actually keep this lifting device in place. And as I mentioned before, sometimes you can kind of move these around to get a little bit more perfection where you want it. But overall, I'm very happy with the fitment. So now we can go back down and start tightening down our hardware. So now that we're happy with it up top, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. Now, this is gonna be the tricky part. Really the hardest part of the installation is getting to a lot of this hardware. Um, our goal, we're gonna to wanna to tighten these four that go into that plate that we fed up first. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a socket and an impact, but you're gonna see there's gonna be some clearance issues for these side ones. So using a ratcheting wrench to get these started or get them at least tightened down is gonna help. They're all gonna be a 15 16 so go ahead, get these ones tightened down first, and then you're gonna make your way to these outside ones. Now just make sure they're nice and snug, and then we'll come back with a torque wrench to get them perfect. Now these ones are going to be a little bit tricky, uh, so I'm going to be using an extension and the fact that we have our exhaust loose is going to allow me just enough room I think to get that extension in a socket. Now you may end up needing a swivel here as well. So with my extension I might be able to get here. Now another thing you can do is take a ratchet strap and take this exhaust and ratchet it over, really give you a little more space here, but I think with my swivel I should be able to get this at least tightened down. Now with those ones tightened in on our brackets, I'm gonna go ahead again with just a ratcheting wrench to at least get these started a little bit more. And then hopefully I can get a short well socket here um, with a uh, ratchet and that way we can really get these cinched up. Now on the forward bolt here towards the cab on the passenger side, you can absolutely get a socket on it. Um, that's probably gonna be the best option for this one. Now over here, this one, as you've probably noticed when you're threading it in, it's kind of tucked away, so we're going to have to get a little creative. Um, and I think we may end up having to use, again, our ratcheting wrench and then uh, potentially get an extension to shoot across here. So we'll get to that here shortly. Uh, now I am able to get a socket as well as a ratchet in here. It is tight. You're not going to be able to get too much movement. If you have one that swivels um, or bends here, that's going to make it a little bit easier. But uh, I am able to get some rotation, so I'm going to continue on doing this. That way we can get it nice and tight. So now we're going to come back with our torque wrench and we're going to tighten down in the same order that we did uh, the normal tightening. Now the torque settings are in the instruction manual. And if you need a torque wrench, we have them available here at E-Trailer 
Uh, generally, you can rent them at an auto parts store. Um, so these ones, not too hard to get to with a swivel and an extension. These ones, we're gonna be using a crow's foot, so I'll show you that when we get to torquing those. So now for a crow's foot extension, that's gonna be the ticket for getting a torque wrench in here. So just attaches two here, allows us to get in this tight spot. It's still gonna be pretty tight here, so just uh, be careful, and that way it doesn't slip off and you bust your knuckles. And you may need to rotate it a few times in order to get that fully torqued, but just take your time here. Now these ones here, since they're tightened down, you can actually get a deep well socket. And again, this is, you don't have a whole lot of room to work here, so hopefully you got it tightened down um, pretty good before, because we're not getting a whole lot of turns here, but as you can see, we can still get this properly torqued. I'm gonna attempt to do the same thing on this one as well. Now, if you had to move any of those plastic fasteners for those wiring here, you can go ahead and put those back in. Now we're getting ready to put our handle in on the driver's side here and it's going to slide right in this area. The thing is, is we're going to need to be moving that handle to engage and disengage the lock. So this little wiring here, you can see the plastic plug. I'm going to pry this out and what we're going to do is we're going to just try to move this wiring up and out of the way. And I think the best way to do this is we'll feed the handle in and uh, once we kind of get it attached, we can start to see where this is gonna end up. We just want this to be clear so it's not rubbing against it. And we'll just throw a zip tie around it to keep it out of the way. Now the 2500s, the handle is gonna face up. So I'm gonna just take this and we're gonna just slide it in. And then we're gonna grab our bracket and hardware and head underneath the truck to make that attachment. So we can see our handle here and uh, it has square holes. The further ones are gonna be the ones for the 2500 and our carriage bolts are gonna sit through that and then we're gonna bolt our bracket up using the flange nuts. So we kind of just put this in place here. So I'm gonna just take our carriage bolts here and we'll drop those down in, make sure that they're seated flat. And then we can go ahead and take our bracket and uh, this is gonna align with those pretty easily. And we'll just feed those carriage bolts through the two holes on the bracket. And then we're gonna finish these up with the flange nuts that are included. So I'm gonna just get these hand tightened. Now there is a torque setting. So as long as we get these hand tightened in and then we can snug them up, we'll come back with the torque wrench and get these all properly installed. Now I'm gonna go back and torque these down on the back end with my torque wrench. Um, but in order to attach this, we're gonna want to get this hardware secure, but we also want to make sure we can pass our carriage bolts through these. So what we're gonna do is disengage this. So I've taken our lifting device out. That way, I mean, this is already bolted up and torqued down, so it's not gonna move anywhere. Now during this process, you wanna make sure that it doesn't disengage. You can wedge something up here. Just the main thing is uh, if you bump this back, obviously it's going to um, engage again. So you don't want your hands getting pinched. So what I'm gonna do here, grab our carriage bolt, pass that through. And I'll grab the other one and do the same. So now I'm just gonna kind of align these up. We may need to kind of move that handle a little bit. But uh, once we kind of get these passed through, we can take our flange nuts and we can get these hand tightened in just to kind of get them started. And it might be easier to uh, re-engage it since we have our carriage bolts in. So I'm gonna just slowly let this go back in and you can see it's gonna seat a little bit more properly here. So just make sure you have the head of the carriage bolt in that square and then we'll go through tighten these down, and then I'm gonna go back with the torque wrench and get these two as well as the ones that went on the handle. So now that we have our handle attached, what we're gonna to wanna to do is actually go through and make sure that it's engaging, it's locking in place, and it's doing what it needs to do. 
Now I recommend doing this a few times and looking for any clearance issues. So we mentioned earlier that we had that wire loom that's kind of in the way and that plastic plug I pried out, but it is kind of rubbing against it. So what I'm going to do is engage this and move it around and zip tie that out of the way. And there may be a few other cables here and there, some of those brake lines that are flexible that we're going to want to zip tie. And we want a nice clean path. That way it's not rubbing against our handle here and chafing it over time. So just go through, make sure that it actuates nice and easy, nice and smooth. It's not catching on anything and if there is anything that is catching on just go ahead zip those up and make it nice and open for that path now I do feel some rubbing and you can see the handle here this is that same wire loom that we took the plastic plug off there's another one that's right here so I'm gonna go ahead and pry this off and uh, the kit does not include zip ties so if you need to pick some up we have some available here at e trailer but uh, once we have these plugs out we can kind of move that wire it's pretty solid but there should be enough play for us to be able to zip it out of the way. There's another plastic fastener that was right here and I loosened that up and that does give you a little bit of room here. And what I did is I just raised this wire loom up and zip tied it to these clips here. You don't want to use any hard lines because that can chafe it, but using the plastic clips, I was able to create a nice little pocket for that handle to slide. So again, just actuate it until you for sure have everything up out of the way and just make sure it's zipped up nice and that's just going to prolong the life of all your lines. Now we're getting ready to put our safety chain loops in and again another testament to BMW and really thinking ahead is they have this template here so it's going to make it easy to align those holes perfectly so what we're going to do is take our ball make sure that it is engaged so that way the ball doesn't drop all the way down and that's going to create a nice little uh, spot to hold this template in place so we'll just slide this over top and you can see this is going to align the four holes here so just make sure that it's nice and even exactly where you want it and then you can see the indents that's where we're going to drill our pilot holes so I'll go ahead with my pilot bit and I'm going to go ahead and make those holes now make sure you drill all the way through So now I'm going to hit, go ahead and repeat the same process for the other three holes. So now we're going to enlarge our pilot holes and you're going to want to use an 11 16 drill bit. Now these ones went straight through. The back ones you are drilling through it uh, through the brace. So again, you're going to be kind of working at it for a little bit. I suggest having your safety chain U-bolts here. That way you can kind of test fit to make sure that you're not over drilling. But uh, really you just want to allow this to be able to pass through. Sometimes it'll catch here on the threads, but if you can kind of work it in to where this drops in place, that's what we're looking for. So we'll go through, enlarge all of these, and make sure our U-bolts pass in. Now I do recommend putting a little bit of cutting lube on here, uh, not only to make it a little bit easier to pass through, but also it's gonna get really hot if not, and it can leave burn marks on the paint. So just take your time here, use some cutting lube, and we'll make our way through these. Now with our holes drilled out, again, I'm gonna go ahead just test to make sure that these fit in. And again, sometimes these threads will catch, but if you can get those to pass through, this is kind of what you're looking for because the springs are gonna go underneath. So as long as you can kind of raise this up, that's what we're looking for. So just make sure they both fit. And then just as before, vacuum it up. I'm gonna go ahead, file some of these edges and touch it up with some paint. We can then go ahead, drop the U-bolts in, and then we'll go under. That way we can get the springs on them. And with those U-bolts passed down, we can go ahead and take the springs, separate those, and we're going to have this cone shape. That larger end is going to go towards the top here. And uh, we're going to want to push this up. And the reason being is sometimes when you tighten the nut, it can actually kind of start to uh, go in the thread. So just make sure that it's pushed up as you're doing this. Um, and then we're going to follow it up with the nut. And we're going to tighten this down to where it's flush with the bottom here. So again, I'm going to just hand tighten it here. And then I'm going to try my best to push up our spring so it doesn't get caught in those threads. And then with the 15 16 I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. Again, just looking for it to be flush on the bottom. So now we'll go through and we'll repeat the same for the other three. So all that's left to do now is get our exhaust hanger back on. We're gonna get our heat shield up as well as our spare tire. And then we're ready to start using our gooseneck. And that was a look and installation of the BMW Underbed Gooseneck Kit. 
for a 2022 Ram 2500 with the OEM prep package.